this holiest day of the Christian year, I feel I must put aside any consideration of the deeply disturbing industrial crisis on our waterfront, grave though its effects may well be, and very divisive to our national life, because today I am bound to talk about greater, deeper problems of much more lasting potential danger to our own and indeed all civilised Western societies. On this Good Friday, I remember it was my custom when a young man to read every year Robert Browning's poem Christmas Eve and Easter Day. The Easter Day section which one read on Good Friday, began with the line, How very hard it is to be a Christian. Now, in many respects, that is a most important truth we cannot forget. Because Christianity does make a quite different priority to that common in our culture now. Our Saviour observed, no man can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or otherwise in the reverse. You cannot serve both God and mammon. This makes it clear that the great duty of Christianity is the reverse of that now fashionable in the business world and the industrial world and in general social life. It is not about acquiring things but about giving things away. Now when the Saviour told people to go and sell all they have and give it to the poor this advice uh, was no doubt more practicable in the society of 2000 BC and, or 2000 years ago in Palestine than it is today. But nonetheless, there's a deep truth there that if we are to live for self alone, this is in fact, however much we say we are kept filled, born against Christians, uh, but yet we're very keen on making big money in our business career, this sort of thing somehow doesn't quite work. Because clearly, wanting the accumulation of money, the love of mammon, must exclude the love of God. So how full of evangelical glow you may feel after a popular church service. If your mind and life activity is all about making yourself rich and comfortable, I am afraid you are loving mammon and hating God. To be a Christian you must partly forget yourself, yet not entirely. Both Jesus and the Stoics knew there are two impulses we need, sufficient self-love to keep ourselves active and confident to do good works, and a humane compassion for the universe and all people, encouraging us to help and to give things away whenever we can. Now by that standard of Christianity, and I mean a Christianity that has a sense of the understanding of the universe in terms of a great presence. What more wonderful, wiser, more powerful and more benevolent than we can imagine. That somehow stands at the centre of our universe. Unless we have that intellectual view, 
and the moral view of giving away rather than acquiring. We cannot live as Christians. Perhaps you can't give away in the way of the first century BC, but the notion that you are come to this world to give and to serve rather than to claw your way to the top is essential to the true role of humanity. Now in this situation today we must be very careful that we do not lightly and foolishly forget those lessons. We have advanced less far than we thought from the Middle Ages. That wonderful Rhineland mystic, Thomas of Kempen, wrote in his imitation of Christ, the world may change, but it does not progress. Those 14th century remarks still make sense. You can say, oh, look at our new technology. But isn't it funny and you go to the bank to get something arranged, computer dealings with head office take a week or two longer than the old discussion with the local manager across the table. When you want to buy something in a big shop, with a new cash register, computerized, recording everything about the thing you bought and the whole transaction, you will see it takes about three times as long as the old pre-computerized one did. In fact, what industry and business call progress is a nuisance and a delay to the ordinary person. It is only progressive in the sense of making those behind it richer. And if you are a Master of Business Administration, who feel it's your duty to persuade people that the new technology can be used to replace so much labour in so many places, and that by an all-electronic process you'll be able to save vast sums of money for dividends. Such a man, I'm afraid, runs the risk of being a worshipper of mammon and a hater of God. And so does a Bachelor of Arts and Communications who it is his vocation to make smooth, palatable little propaganda sheets to suggest that what is good for a big company is somehow good for you, but it probably is not. That again shows a man at risk of selling his soul to mammon. So, in fact, we have to examine very closely in this time where we are going ourselves and where our whole culture is going. This is not a light question and it will not go away and it is of eternal importance to this world so long as this planet and our culture survive.